What's going on guys? Um, so I made a video a while back about how to make, uh, how to build a death cart. Showed you with that one a little bit. Um, and then before that, you know, we talked about what good and bad sides of a death cart. But with this video, I want to show you kind of a little bit about the roll cage design of a death cart. What Dante crashed my truck. Dante crashed Corey's truck. But we're going to talk about roll cage design, which I guess is sort of relevant because I'm going to build him a tube bumper for the front of his forerunner. But we got a couple main points I'm going to cover and try to do this. Try to do this better than previous videos. I'm going to cut a little bit so I'm not just like that. Uh, uh, uh. So let's get to it. And before I start, if you could like and subscribe to this video, well, like this video and subscribe to me, I'd be really happy. This would be a full heart if I wasn't using my other hand to hold my phone. Just appreciate that. So the first part of a roll cage, the main part, as they say, would be the main hoop. This boy right here. Um, you want it to be all one piece for obvious reasons. Uh, most tech, uh, any racing tech, I don't think would take a two piece main hoop. Um, so for the most part, I, I usually build my cages to FD spec. The car isn't FD spec, but the roll cage mostly is. Um, so build the cage to the racing homologation of your liking. It doesn't really matter. Um, FD spec, SCCA, NASA, fucking NHRA. Yep, whatever you want. But you want your main hoop to be fairly simple. You don't want it, you don't, I've seen one that comes out right there. You don't want to do that because that just provides extra bends and kind of gives it a extra place to crumble and drop the ground on your head. Now the next boy would be the A-pillar bars. Um, you could set them up different ways. Most racing, most homologations tech doesn't, uh, doesn't require a certain kind. You can do the halo, which comes out, boom, connects it or you can do the one piece A-pillar bar, um, or Crowworks built one, which is the not the best way to do it. It comes up from here, goes up across and back down. So you have a one piece like windshield bar, and then it has bars connecting from here back. That I don't think is as safe as some of the other designs. I may be wrong, but that's just my personal opinion on that. And then also, I kind of, I have a certain shape I like for the, for the, I guess the silhouette of it. And then just like that one, I like that. I like them to be somewhat proportional and have a good shape to them. I don't like, like on the Hoonigan one, overall, I like the Hoonigan one, but the top of the. The top of the A-pillar bar comes a little bit too far forward before going out. So, not a huge fan of that. And then, another one, I think Haggard's, the top comes like, oop. Top comes like way the fuck out. Like you got a fucking, I don't even know. It just looks a little weird to me. Another big point with the uh, A-pillar bars is, you know, I this gap is not good. Uh, I'm going... My plan's always been to gusset this. Um, but then on this one, I actually just merged them and th that's getting just a weld bead right down it. Just so basically with a gap here and with no roof, it allows the whole front end to, you know, move a little bit because the only thing holding it is down here at the bottom of the door the rocker the rocker and the trans tunnel are the only and I guess the frame rails are the only thing holding the firewall and the whole front end from allowing it to like shift up and down making your chassis all noodly next up we have the door bars so you can pretty much do whatever the fuck you want with the door bars you can make it look like a NASCAR you can make it look like a sweet drift car you can make them super boring like the ones on the rental cart Super boring. Um, these still need vertical, 
ver vertical braces um, to make them tech legal. Um, and then these guys, I, I made it a little bit different. I pulled them out a little bit so that they have a, just gives you more room to get in and out of the car. Um, I'm a huge fan of the bend right here because that gives you more side protection um, while dropping down to still make it easy to get in and out of. Um, the BMW is just a slant, really boring. I wanted it super boring so it was easy to replace and stuff for when an idiot crashed it. Now the last thing pretty much I need to cover with the main part of the roll cage is triangulation. And if you're building a roll cage, hopefully you know about triangulation. Triangles are the strongest shape because they hold themselves together and whatnot. But in this case, this is a convertible car, so the floor is heavily braced. On my death cart, I have a brace going from right here back, which provides a lot of triangulation that the quarter panel would have otherwise been responsible for, the bracing. Um, this one as well is going to be getting one that goes from right over here straight back um, so that that helps that and then you can always do triangulation boom boom triangulate all the corners triangulate as much as possible and it'll just stiffen up which is good if you get in an accident and it's also good just for overall handling purposes so now that we're done talking about the main part we can move up to the front and this is a different style than what I've previously done, but in some way I like to brace the strut towers to the firewall. That doesn't really have anything to do with being a cart, but it is a good thing to do anyways. Um, that's a weak point on most cars. So something like that. And then on carts, I do basically the same tube front that I would do on any drift car. Um, and then the front bumper, front bash bar assembly, which isn't on this, not on that one, none to show you. Um, basically, I like them to look just like a drift car bash bar that I would do on any, I don't like any sort of stupid grill opening that's excess weight or, you know, whatever. Um, and then just make it look like a fucking regular front, front end. I have a question. Should this be on video? It should. Okay, question. It's, it's kind of a logical question, and I don't know myself. All right, well, this is kind of an instructional video, so okay. hit it. Are you going to put a bar across here? Yep, there will be a bar across. There will be a bar? There will be a bar across there. Okay. Um, that would be called the dash bar or the knee bar, um, which, if you didn't see, boom, boom. And that'll brace the, kind of brace the A-pillar area from squishing inward just generally making it stronger, especially if you get in a side impact, something comes here, it won't just buckle the car inward at the firewall or the cowl. For the final portion, we're over here at my E46 that's never gonna get finished. Um, basically, the rear end, you can do whatever the fuck you want. The way I like to do it, which is not completed on either of those cars, is something just like this, really. It doesn't have to be as bulky or come as far out um, because, well, you don't have a trunk or anything. But you could, if you wanted, you could just throw a little loop like this, which will give you a little rear impact protection, um, give you a place to put a jack point, which is nice, or you can just jack it up from the diff. Um, and then removable bash bars are always nice. You can make a jig and replicate them, have backups, and then crash them into a wall, make a new one throw it on, good to go. Rear radiator, not a necessity, but it is a decent option for a cart. Pushes some of the weight to the rear and it looks cool, that's pretty much it. And I think that about covers it. So, thanks for watching. Like I already said, like and subscribe, cause you're awesome and I love you. And keep an eye out for more videos of the carts. Video of this cart, update coming soon. I'm work I've been working on it tonight, so keep an eye out for that.